Hi, uh, my name is Gavin Schmidt. I'm a climate modeler at the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies. Well, Gavin, you, uh, you gave a presentation this morning that was relevant to some of the news that's come out lately from uh, the CERN uh, research project in regard to solar magnetic fields effect on climate. Right. Um, so the talk I was giving and, and the work that we've been doing has really been uh, a kind of bottom-up a way of trying to estimate how important the solar cycle is and the long-term solar changes are for climate. Uh, so what we do is we're building all of the different processes that we uh, have good evidence uh, are happening uh, as a function of how much UV is coming in from the sun, how much change there is in the cosmic rays, and we're putting this all into a coherent and consistent model framework with the idea that you know we can actually go from uh, you know the process to, to the results and then how that changes the temperatures, how it changes the winds, how it changes the climate uh, and making like all of those connections uh, along and then making sure that when we're looking at uh, one method or, or one mechanism versus another mechanism that we can compare them we can see okay well how big is this compared to that which ones are more important when are they more important you know perhaps that's going to change so the work that we've been talking about today uh, is related to the work that we've been doing uh, in preparation for the next IPCC report so these are coordinated uh, long uh, simulations with climate models that include uh, our best guesses of what is uh, going on. And so I was talking today about uh, some responses to the solar cycle, uh, including you know, ozone changes in the stratosphere, uh, all the way down to the surface, how that's affecting the temperatures, how it affects water vapor, how it affects the winds, and eventually how it's affecting the surface climate. And, and we're finding very good results that match uh, the observations uh, quite well using these kind of chemical ozone feedbacks that the people have thought about for a while, but this is really the first time that we've been able to do it uh, uh, with a long coherent set of simulations. The other thing that we've been doing is we've been putting in uh, more complicated aerosol physics that allows us to uh, make an estimate of how important the cosmic ray ionization is for forming small aerosol particles which people have hypothesized are going to grow into larger particles and the larger particles interact with clouds and so that would be a mechanism by which these cosmic rays could affect the climate. Uh, and so we've put in our, again, our best estimates of the processes involved and, you know, we can turn on the cosmic rays, we can put them on again and we can see what difference it makes. And at the very small scale, uh, which is in line with uh, the results that came out of CERN, at the very small scale, uh, you do see an increase in uh, aerosol nucleation. Uh, so the production of small particles, uh, but what happens is that they need to coagulate to become the larger particles that are important for climate. And when we do that and we kind of propagate that all the way through, uh, we find that that's a very small effect. Uh, so small, in fact, that it doesn't actually have any effect on climate that we can detect in the simulations that we've done so far. Now, this is just preliminary uh, stuff, uh, but you know, we've, 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 we're trying lots of different things and the, the ozone feedback mechanisms, uh, the, the photochemistry mechanisms are producing large signals that we can compare to the signals that we're seeing in the real world. Uh, and the galactic cosmic ray processes via this aerosol uh, cloud connection uh, don't seem to be giving us uh, anything like that same magnitude of effect. So, you know, this is still early days and other people are going to have to repeat this and, and, and check that, uh, that what we've done is, uh, is stable and that the assumptions that we've made are reasonable. Um, but right now, it looks very much like the chemistry uh, mechanisms for in, in increasing the amount of solar variability in the climate are actually the dominant mechanisms and the changes in ionization, the changes because of cosmic rays, uh, really aren't that important. Excellent. And uh, Gavin, I understand that you are an occasional viewer of the Climate Crack videos? I am. I, uh, I, I share them with all my friends. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much for your time. You're very welcome. Thank you.